Hey guys, welcome back. It's Neon. Welcome back to Clownfish TV. We're going to talk about comic books, the comic book industry, DC Comics, uh, all the changes going on there and all the doom and gloom, the doom and gloom going on in the comic book industry right now. And you're probably wondering why I'm starting this video on Earthworm Jim. Uh, the reason I'm starting the video on Earthworm Jim is I want to use it as an example of why comics are not completely screwed i want to disclaim this because people always you know say when i do these videos about the comic book industry they're like oh that means that comics are dead uh there's no way to make a living in comics anymore nobody wants to buy comic books anymore and i want to be clear that when i'm talking about the comic book industry and its its problems i am talking specifically about the direct market about marvel and dc uh, IDW, some other mainstream publishers like that. I'm not talking about crowdfunding, which is, is exploding right now. And I'm not talking about manga, which is also exploding right now. So if you want to work in comics, absolutely, it is possible. It's just you're probably going to have to take a different route. Uh, going through Marvel and DC or IDW or Boom or one of these other publishers, I don't think is a sustainable business model long term because they seem to be declining declining at a shocking rate and uh you know we've been talking for a while about the future of marvel comics and dc comics here on clownfish tv and i know i did a video last year talking about how you know it, it's very possible that uh you know disney may get tired of bankrolling marvel comics and shut it down and now forbes is talking about dc comics possibly being shut down because it's not profitable enough for warner media and there's a lot of changes going on over at warner and they might just pull the plug on dc comics it's possible it's totally possible so before we get into the video please subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't done so already you guys have been awesome we want to keep bringing you content like we've been bringing you for the last year uh things have been blowing up over the last couple months and you guys have been just absolutely incredible thank you so much uh for that so let's talk about this article it's been making the rounds on twitter i just saw it for the first time yesterday uh actually a couple people had retweeted it and uh you know it's interesting that forbes is actually weighing in on the comic book industry right now and there's there are a lot of problems with dc comics a lot of very high profile um closings consolidations uh you know obviously they shut vertigo down a couple of months ago last month and that they're just going to roll the vertigo line into their other monthly line not long after that, Mad Magazine has the plug pulled on it. Again, another DC Comics brand, long-standing, uh, long-standing magazine. Uh, you know, I, I remember picking up Mad Magazine when I was six, eight years old. Uh, you know, reading the uh, the Star Wars parodies. Right, that's how old I am. But uh, loved Mad Magazine as a kid, and it's it's going away. It's going away. It's not going to be on the newsstands anymore. And neither is Vertigo. Again, two brands that I grew up with, and DC is is restructuring. You have blogs like TechCrunch coming out last year and saying that comic sales are down as readers abandon print. Now, I don't think that's entirely true. Uh, I do think comic sales are down. I don't think comic readers are abandoning print, though, because, you, again, you look at these crowdfunded comics. Doug to Naples, Earthworm Jim, $761,000. This is just one of many recent crowdfunded projects that has, has done hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars for print books. So print's not really going away either i don't know of too many people that said that they're going to stop reading stop reading print comics in favor of doing digital comics in fact a lot of people were sort of on the fence with with digital comics who are comic book readers um you know especially when the digital comics cost as much as the print comics the one digital comics app i really love right now is shonen jump it's like two dollars a month for unlimited manga uh it's great i do read it on my ipad I don't have room to store shelves and shelves and shelves full of manga. So for me, that one works out really well. But Comixology, it's hard to justify the expense when you're talking, you know, $3.99 for a new issue and you can go buy the print comic. I think there are a lot of factors going on here. I don't think it's, it's necessarily people abandoning print, but comic shops are certainly declining. Comic books, monthly comics, floppy comics are certainly getting harder to find. So there are a lot of factors here. But the long and short of it is, is that the comic book industry, as it is right now, uh, you know, mainly, uh, mainly catering to the direct market. It's, it's, it's dying. It's, it's a slow death. Actually, I would say it's already dead. 
it's just taking a while for the uh, uh, rigor mortis, I guess, to set in. Comic shops are closing at a shocking rate. People have all kinds of theories as to why it's going on. And depending on where they're at, they're going to be like, well, it's because of politics. It's because of business changes. It's because of brick and mortar. And I think it's a combination of all the above. And that doesn't change that doesn't change the fact that the comic book industry is not lucrative for the two corporate entities that basically bankroll the comic book industry. Disney with Marvel Comics and Warner Brothers with DC Comics. And if either one of those goes out or they stop publishing comics, it's basically game over for the direct market as we know it. Because the direct market can't survive without Marvel or DC. That's how, that's the corner that the comic book industry has painted itself into. While there are a lot of indie comics out there and a lot of publishers out there publishing some really cool stuff, some of it not so good, but there is some really good stuff out there too. None of them have the market share that Marvel and DC have. So this article from Forbes talking, where does DC Comics fit into AT&T's vision for Warner Media? And that's a damn good question because we've been following Warner Media here on Clownfish TV. We talk about how Warner Media, now that they're owned by AT&T, uh, they're trimming the fat. They're trimming the fat with Crunchyroll. They're trimming the fat with Rooster Teeth. They're trying to get more blood out of both Crunchyroll and Rooster Teeth. They shut down Drama Fever literally just overnight. They're like, yeah, we're not doing it anymore. We don't know what's going on with some of the Cartoon Network shows that were announced, like Thundercats War or Crunchyroll's High Guardian Spice. Uh, it seems like they're trying very, very hard to trim as many unnecessary divisions as possible to get ready for the next phase of the streaming wars, with HBO now. So it could be that the streaming wars actually kill off new comic book material, which is a shame. But let's let's look at this article here. So earlier in the month at San Diego Comic-Con, returning attendees noticed a major change on the show's massive exhibit floor, the booth for DC Comics, which had been a massive standalone pavilion in the center of the publisher's area, in the center of the hall, was gone. America's oldest and second largest comic book publisher had retreated to the far back corner of the hall where it was incorporated into the multi-level Warner Media exhibit in the shadow of banks of giant monitors previewing upcoming shows and cast appearances. Yeah, DC, DC Comics is basically just a brand, an entertainment brand under Warner Media now, just like Marvel is a brand underneath Disney. People don't realize this. Like these comic books, the comic books themselves are no longer important to these companies. And that's scary because these companies basically prop up the comic book industry by keeping those two publishers in business. So the subtext of this move could not have been clear. AT&T, now the parent company of Warner Media and its divisions, including DC Comics, previously known as DC Entertainment, HBO, Turner, and Warner Brothers, does not seem terribly interested in being in the comic book publishing business. It's telling that in a long profile of AT&T uh, CEO John Stanky this morning in Variety, DC was one of the only Warner Media brands that was not mentioned. DC Comics isn't even worth mentioning. They've got a portfolio of IP and they don't even bother mentioning DC Comics. To the extent that DC matters at all in this company's future, it's as a source of owned IP for other media channels and as a lifestyle brand, here we go, to serve as an ambassador to geek culture. In terms of pure economics, this makes sense. The entire comics publishing business in the US, including periodicals, digital, and trade, adds up to 1.1 billion, according to 2018 estimates by ICV2. On a good month, about 35% of the revenue from the direct market goes to DC, along with a chunk of trade book sales for perennial titles like Watchmen and The Dark Knight Returns. That wasn't ever very much in the Time Warner days, and it's a smaller drop in an even bigger ocean following the AT&T acquisition. Again, I've been saying for over a year now, okay, the entire comic book industry is worth less than one Marvel movie, one big Marvel movie. It's sad that a billion dollars is a drop in a bucket, but when you're dealing with multi-billion dollar companies like AT&T, like Disney, yeah, it's not a whole lot of money to them. And you're talking, look at all the people. I mean, we're talking every publisher. So out of that billion dollars, you know, only 25 to 30% of that goes to either DC or Marvel. You know, so that's, that's like an underperforming movie for them. So there's another ocean in play as well, an ocean of red ink. This is important. 
They're cutting costs. AT&T's debt following the $85.4 billion Warner Media acquisition stands at $164 billion. That is 164 comic book industry years. The company obviously believes it can monetize the Warner Media assets to make that back, but that's a huge sword hanging over management's head, and the, that kind of thing gets uh, division chiefs thinking about short-term wins rather than long-term strategy. One place that AT&T does not see any value is in sub-brands. One of the company's first moves following the acquisition was to shutter several of Warner Media's niche streaming services. Yeah, Drama Fever got shut down, boom, one day. It was gone. It was there one day. It was gone the next. There was no explanation. They just shut the damn thing down. That could happen to Crunchyroll. That could happen to Rooster Teeth. We don't know. They're already folding these, these companies into each other, uh, including the beloved cinephile outlet Filmstruck, even um, seen by many as a prelude to rolling as much of the company's media artillery as possible into a mega streamer to compete with Disney. That's what's going on. Netflix and the rest, a move that seems essential given the precipitous drop in subscribers to AT&T's satellite TV, uh, direct TV, which is now being renamed, I guess, you know, AT&T now or something. I don't know. Uh, but that sentiment has also crept into the publishing side. In recent months, DC has dropped the axe on its prestige imprint Vertigo, the creative engine behind hits like Sandman, Preacher and Swamp Thing, Doom Patrol and Fables. On the eve of Comic-Con, the company announced the cancellation of MAD on Comic-Con Eve, the venerable humor magazine that changed the face of American satire and has continuously been published since the mid-50s. Since the mid-50s, they don't care. They're like Alfred E. Newman, fuck you, we're done, we're pulling the plug, boom, you're gone. Neither of these was a big moneymaker in terms of month-to-month -month sales. But both brands occupy some valuable real estate in the psyche of fans. Even if the properties built on that land are in disrepair, it seems short-sighted to vacate the premises entirely. So the article goes on and on. Uh, it says AT&T appears more interested in boosting DC as a consumer lifestyle brand. Marvel's trying that crap too, and it's it's not really working that well. But the thing is, is they probably do make more money selling Superman t-shirts in underoos than they do selling Superman comic books. Warner's efforts to bring DC superheroes to the big screen have been hit or miss and suffer, especially in comparison to the gleaming chrome-plated juggernaut that is Disney's MCU. Uh, but they're trying to they're trying to uh, build an empire on TV with the Arrowverse. They talk about that. Um, they talk about that, and they're talking about how they've got this uh, daily chat show, the DC Daily, with uh, <laughs> their hosts and their over-the-top squeeing about the latest merch represents Warner Media's highest aspirations for its audience. Younger, hipper, more ethnically and gender diverse than the traditional DC Comics readership, which is old and male, even by the standards of the comic industry, and dedicated to omnivoriously consuming everything even loosely affiliated with geek culture as part of their hip, socially mediated, comics-defined lives. But comics, to a lot of these people, comic books themselves are not the center of their geek lifestyle. It's usually uh, animation, movies, you know, games. Uh, the comic books are there, but a lot of these people, as we've seen, they're not buying comic books themselves. They're geeking out about characters that they watch on TV or watch in the movies. So, or they just like the character. They like Harley Quinn. How many Harley Quinn cosplayers actually read the Batman comic books? You know, have, I mean, is there a definitive number? Like... Do we know that the X number of Harley Quinn cosplay, or they just do it because they think Harley Quinn's cool? You know, it's a cool character. I mean, hell, how many Harley Quinn co cosplayers have even watched Batman the Animated Series? I would wager a guess very, very few. So again, this is more about, uh, you know, geeking out over certain characters, even if you don't know those characters very well. Uh, it's just cool. They're cool to look at, right? They're talking about the merchandise and they're talking about what happened 20, 30 years ago with Jeanette Kahn. Again, women never worked in comics before, uh, but Jeanette Kahn ran DC Comics uh, successfully for a number of years, but DC was living on borrowed time even back then. So where does all the branding leave the publishing business? A generation ago, faced with a similar situation, DC's then co-president and publisher Jeanette Kahn appealed to Time Warner management that wanted to dramatically cut back on DC's current publishing in favor of reprints saying that the company's new material was the lifeblood of the company, a source of new fans, new IP, without which the characters and related merch would decline into obscurity. She won that argument, 
we're talking 20, 30 years ago. She won that argument and DC under her stewardship ended up minting many of the golden coins in which it still trades in, including the Dark Knight, Watchmen, and Sandman. Yeah, DC pretty much peaked in the 80s. Like all the, the classic 80s stuff is, is being reprinted again and again and again and giving uh, DC a lot of his revenue, you know, Dark Knight and Watchmen in particular. Uh, but they haven't had any hits on that level since then. But again, you know, if they had pulled the plug on DC back then, we would not have the Dark Knight and Watchmen, uh, despite never being a gigantic engine of revenue within Time Warner. That's it. it. It's not a lot of money to Time Warner, but it was good for the comic book industry. So DC Comics today is in a similar situation following a demoralizing mid-decade move from its traditional home in New York to Burbank, where they can keep an eye on them. The company has stumbled through various events and line reboots, uh, milking assets like Frank Miller and Alan Moore for the last dregs of fan appeal and relevance and relying on high-priced milestone, thousandth issues of long-running titles like Action Comics and Detective Comics to make up in dollar share. This is important to make up in dollar share what they're losing in unit share of an increasingly crowded comics market. I mean, for Marvel to to maintain its its dollarly they have to crank out a shit ton of comics and a lot of them aren't very good they're just cranking stuff out so the numbers look good to disney so they can justify their existence so dan didio publicly fumed that reissues of comics 30s and 30 and 40 years old were outselling current stories featuring the same characters calling it a failure on us at least they admit it but it's too late <laughs> you need a time machine you need to go back 10 or 20 years and stop making stupid decisions. Uh, but the comics today, no, they don't have the long lasting appeal of the comics even 20 or 30 years ago. Echoing his predecessor's warning from years past, he added, we should be focused on moving things forward, always pushing the boundaries and finding new stories to tell. It's gonna be really hard when they keep pruning the publishing division, isn't it? That's how we'll survive. You know, I never thought that we would we would be at a point where we're like comics is just freaking hanging on by its fingertips. And it happened so fast, but it didn't. It really didn't. The writing was on the wall 10, 12 years ago, and there were warning signs and the industry didn't adapt. And here we are at zero hour. The comic book industry is effectively dead and the corporate owners know this. This is why you're seeing uh, you know, Marvel especially trying to make a case for its continued existence. The MCU does not need the Marvel comics. They're even saying flat out that they're deviating from the comics. You know, we did a, a video on the Black Widow uh, movie, the upcoming movie, and the screenwriter basically said she doesn't give a shit about the comics. She never really read the comics and she's not gonna adhere to comics canon. Uh, we look at things like Guardians of the Galaxy, which were, were based very, very loosely on the comics. I mean. Literally, they could stop publishing Marvel Comics tomorrow. The MCU would probably continue to go for a while. The general public's not going to know that these characters never existed in the comic books. They don't really care. You know, they don't care. And and some of the characters who are really popular now never existed in the comics. You know, Phil Coulson, you know, never existed in the comics. They made him up made him up for the movies and people probably think Phil Coulson's been in the comics since the 1960s. And that's not true. So you know, from their point of view, they're like, why are we, when we're so strapped for resources, we're trying to get these streaming services off the ground. And Disney is not in the, the best of places either, even though they're making a lot of money at the box office, they're spending a lot of money on the theme parks. They spend a ton of money on Fox and they're going to look at every penny spent and be like, is this a good use of our money? Are we going to make this money back? And to be completely honest, Marvel and DC are losing propositions. You know, publishing comics, that it's okay if the comic book industry was just going to survive for the sake of surviving, but they have to bring revenue to the table for their corporate overlords, and they're not going to bring enough in. It's not enough. The margins aren't enough. Even if the comic book industry is profitable, it's not enough money to make Disney and Time Warner happy when they can put the same amount of, of resources into starting some other tech division or something and make significantly more money than they're ever gonna make on comic books so yeah do i think this is gonna happen soon yeah i mean i honestly thought the comic industry had another 10 years and again i want to be clear we're talking we're talking about the mainstream comic industry we're talking about marvel comics and dc comics what we're not talking about is the booming uh self-publishing comic book industry you know that that people are still making good livings 
you know, self-publishing comic books, that manga is still selling very, very well. Those are completely different things from the situation with Marvel and DC. I completely believe that Marvel and DC, Marvel and or DC could disappear tomorrow and there still would be a comic book industry. It's just not going to look like it does today with the direct market and the 399 single issues, you know, it's just not going to it's not going to look that way anymore. But you do have other publishers, you know, coming out with uh, books either through crowdfunding or publishers like Alterna Comics that is get, you know getting comic books back into convenience stores or selling comics for under $2. You know they're 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 penetrating that that mass market that just frankly isn't worth it. It's not worth it to Disney and Warner anymore to do it. That doesn't mean that the money's not there. It's just not worth it to the biggest corporations in the entertainment industry to chase comic books. But if you want to make a living as a comic book artist, a comic book creator and you cultivate an audience, it absolutely absolutely is still possible for you to do that you just don't have to generate a billion dollars a year in profits to justify your existence you can make you know fifty thousand dollars a year and still be able to do it for a living uh, and again there are cases out here on indiegogo you know hundreds of thousands of dollars uh kickstarter hundreds of thousands of dollars there there's been at least one comic book campaign that did over a million dollars there are people who make livings doing web comics uh you know with with uh, ad revenue and patreon or other donation methods so there are ways to make a living in uh comics still it's just i would not bet on marvel or dc being around in the state that they are now at least not creating new material or a lot of new material in five to ten years it's it's and it might happen sooner than that i mean I, again warner media is getting very very aggressive trying to trim the fat and they're, you know, chopping Mad Magazine. I never thought I'd see the day where Mad Magazine's gone, you know. Um, and it they're coming for DC Comics, too. I mean, you know, we're picking up the DC Comics at Walmart for $4.95, $4.99, the Giants, with a bunch of reprint material. Most people don't even know the difference, you know. And they might just look at that and be like, yeah, we've got, you know, 80 years of material that we can just recycle again and again and again. And people aren't going to know the difference and they're not going to care. We're going to focus on making movies. And uh, that's what both companies are probably going to do. And um, that is that. So we're looking at the swan song, I think, of the superhero comic book industry. Um, very, very sad. But again, comics themselves, comic books as a medium, comic books as something you can do for a living. If you think outside the box, I, I don't think that's going to end. That's not going to end anytime soon. In fact, if Marvel and DC disappear, I think that there's going to be more potential for indie comics creators uh, to to you know get a piece of that uh, market because there's not nearly as much competition. So please subscribe to Clownfish TV for more pop culture news, views, and rants. This has been Neon. I will talk to you later. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.